What's up everybody, Rob Wilson here. We are at the Kaufman Auditorium in the Hill District, which is crazy, because the house I grew up in is a couple miles that way, and the house that I have here now is just around the corner. But this is a really big day. We've got a great event. We've got some venture capitalists in the house. So everybody in the audience who has a dream to start a business, wants to be an entrepreneur, we're gonna show them how to raise money and how to get through all the trials and tribulations that you're gonna have to go through if your company is really gonna blow up. So I gotta get out of here. I gotta go change. We'll see you in a minute. is one of the top uh, investors in women and minority-owned tech companies in the country. It's a Pittsburgh guy in the country. The ecosystem here, there's not that much support for us, right? Whether it's the capital, as far as the money and different things like that, or the mentorship, or just the ability to reach outside of Pittsburgh and pull resources back in. And this is what Stand Up, Stand Out is all about. Um, the thing I, I love about Rob is he's, he's, he's Pittsburgh grad, he's from the Hill District, the Shenley grad, undergrad from University of Pittsburgh, and got his MBA from Carnegie Mellon. But he's very grounded, and he's done a lot in the community, whether it's serving on the school boards, and just mentoring the youth. And um, without any further ado, Rob Wilson. Now, let me just get, you know, just get the elephant in the room out of the way. I can confirm that I am not, nor am I related to Dame Dash. So, just so everybody knows that, because some of y'all was looking at me like I owed you some money or something, so I just wanted to get that out there. Our first guest, you may have seen her being profiled internationally on the CNN documentary, Black in America. She is the owner and founder, CEO, boss lady, of New Me Accelerator, and she is doing everything that she can to expand technology within our community. There have been times where I've done deals just because I'm like, if I don't do this, then you know my whole career is gonna be over, but that's false. That's not actually what's gonna happen. You know, you're just telling yourself that. And actually, I write about this. One of the strategies that I use is I take the situation away, and I say, what, what's really gonna happen to my life if this doesn't go through? Nothing, because I don't have it yet. I'm gonna keep doing the same thing I'm doing right now. So you're not really losing anything. You're not losing okay. anything. Remember 98, 99, that was when, that was, that was the first tech boom, and that was when there was a lot of people moving to San Francisco mm -hmm. to get into this tech game, and you know, they kinda, people thought that they would, you know, go there, start a company, and you know, sell a for billion dollars and get rich. Yeah, everybody in your barber was, was starting a dot-com company. Everybody, mm -hmm. right? And so I knew that that wasn't for me, but I wanted to be around it because it was so vibrant. It was like the gold rush or something. Yeah. Everybody was coming, was going there. So I lived, I moved to San Francisco when I moved from the East Coast and lived in a loft condo because a lot of the tech people lived in loft condos in San Francisco. And I paid way more than I could really afford, but I knew I wanted to be around. That was intentional. It was absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, I sacrificed and paid a little bit more than I, again, than I could really afford. Uh, and sure enough, I met, uh, I met, a young kid in the building who, who had just sold his first company to Microsoft for $300 million. He's 23 years old. You would never know. 23? 23. This man wore a t-shirt every day mm -hmm. and drove a Toyota to sell. Right. And he just sold his company for $300 million. Uh, actually, for seven years straight, women have actually earned the most doctoral degrees from U.S. universities. Uh, as a matter of fact, in every year since 2009, women have earned the majority of all degrees from associates, you know, all the way up to PhD. So when you see that there are much uh, more women becoming very highly educated, um, why do you feel like that that hasn't necessarily been reflected amongst, you know, high profile uh, founders of startups? Well, we're highly educated, but even more than that, black women specifically are the fastest growing segment of entrepreneurship. And have you guys heard of Zappos? Yeah, and so 
um, I was the first investor in Zappos after he and his family. And so, uh, I'll give you an example. Um, the first fifty thousand dollars I put into Zappos turned into almost three million dollars, um, and I ended up putting in a half round of applause dollars. for that because that's yeah, a good return. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and my, most uh, people might think it's lucky, but I did it five times, so it was luck. Can we do something a little fun, real quick? You don't mind? So, where's Bill? I, so, I'd like to get three people. Oh, wow. To come up. Yeah, that's big. You got 60 seconds to pitch your business. Who wants to volunteer? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, you, you ready to go? Uh, yeah, I believe so. Okay, I'm going to start the clock. Go. So, um,. What inspired me to think about this idea is that I lost my little sister when I was 13. She was 10 years old, she was killed around holidays, around her birthday, around her death date. Uh, my mom and the entire family is extremely emotional and we're snappy and some people don't know why we're snappy. Sometimes we don't know why we're snappy, right? So this app would be an app that would remind us of our trauma triggers things that you know so you may lost a family member who have had cancer and around this time you may you know be snappy so if you are conscious of your trauma and triggers you could say oh i'm not mad at this person just because they slammed the door hard i'm angry because of this trauma that i experienced so how many of y'all lost somebody or experienced seconds. something painful you have 15 seconds okay. raise your hand if you experienced something traumatic raise your hand Right, so what if you had something to remind you of why you may be angry, you know, uh, so you wouldn't take this anger out or frustration out on other people? So that, this happens to be um, a, a hot thing in Silicon Valley right now, right? Kind of your mental health issues and, and, and um, dealing with those things via an app. So you're kind of in the, um, kind of doing it at the right time. So, there, there's, so there's a lot of buzz around it um, and I think uh, it's because it's not super tech heavy as to how to do it. You can you can you can get you know some folks to build this thing and actually put it out there to your you know your friends and family and actually get real traction and come talk to people because it's right it's right now and it's, it's something that's topical in the in Silicon Valley. So you're you're on to something. We just closed up the second stand up stand out here in Pittsburgh with our keynote speaker Eric Moore. We also brought back Angela Benton, the founder of NUMI, the first minority accelerator in the world. I tell you what, Pittsburgh, this was an amazing event. The knowledge that the people here gained tonight, invaluable. This is what it's all about. It's bringing all our resources together, working together to uplift our communities. We hope to see you at the next one. I believe that Rob did a phenomenal job. Angela, she is always phenomenal. This was my second time seeing her. I enjoyed the stand up, stand out with Eric Moore. I feel like I learned a lot, you know, about entrepreneurship, startups. Got a couple ideas myself, so, you know, I kind of know where I should take it the next step to get there, man. So, this is the second time I've seen Rob, and I've actually seen him on the news before, so I think he did really, really well. I think that he explains all the things that some people might not understand, and I think that's great. Thank <laughs> you.